Hey, what's up, everybody? A pullback in the silver and gold spot prices. Why? That will be the discussion on today's video. Please consider hitting that thumbs up button on the video and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But as I am recording this video on December the 8th, 2023, we do have some breaking news that is causing the silver and gold markets to pull back. As of the recording of this video, silver is currently down 41 cents or down 1.72% to $23.49. Gold is currently down a little more than three quarters of 1% percent or down $17.30 to $2,011.80. But what is causing the silver and gold prices to pull back today? That is the jobs report. The jobs report was released this morning and it is showing more jobs created than expected. We're going to get to that in just a few moments. But also keep in mind next week is when the Federal Reserve the FOMC will be meeting for their two-day meeting starting on December the 12th and concluding on December the 13th. On December the 13th, that's when the FOMC or the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell will be making his decision what he will be doing with the federal funds interest rate. Will interest rates go up? Will interest rates stay unchanged? Also, CPI data will be released on December the 12th, on the same day that the FOMC will be starting their two-day meeting. I will be referencing an article from CNBC and Jeff Cox that was published today on Friday, December the 8th at 8 31 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It says U.S. payrolls rose 199,000 in November. Unemployment rate fell to 3.7%. Job creation showed little signs of a let up in November as payrolls grew even faster than expected and the unemployment rate fell despite signs of a weakening economy. Non-farm payrolls rose by a seasonally adjusted 199,000 for the month, slightly better than the 190,000 Dow Jones estimate and ahead of the October gain of 150,000 the labor department reported Friday. The unemployment rate declined to 3.7% compared to the forecast for 3.9% as the labor force participation rate edged higher to 62.8%, a more encompassing unemployment rate that includes discouraged workers and those holding part-time positions for economic reasons fell to 7%, a decline of 0.2 percentage point. The department survey of households used to calculate the unemployment rate showed much more robust job growth of 747,000 and an addition of 532,000 workers to the labor force. Average hourly earnings, a key inflation indicator, increased by 0.4% for the month and 4% from a year ago. This monthly increase was slightly ahead of the 0.3% estimate, but the yearly rate was in line. Markets showed mixed reaction to the report with stock market futures modestly negative while treasury yields surged. What we wanted was a strong but modest labor market, and that's what we saw in the November report, said Robert Frick, corporate economist with Navy Federal Credit Union, noting healthy jobs growth, lower unemployment, and decent wage increase. All of this points to a labor market reaching a neutral equilibrium around 150,000 jobs next year, which is plenty to continue the expansion and not enough to trigger a Fed rate hike. Very interesting. So let's go see 
what does the CME Group Fed Watch tool currently show for the possibilities of a Fed rate hike of Jerome Powell raising rates on December the 13th. And by the way, if you don't have a link to this CME Group Fed Watch tool, I'll put a link to this in the description below. Currently, it is showing a 98.2% chance that rates will stay unchanged not going up and a 1.8 percent chance that rates will go up by a quarter percent or 25 basis points and what is interesting about this is just a, about an hour or two ago it was showing a 98.7 percent chance that rates were going to stay unchanged so the percentage has gone down just slightly to 98.2 percent but i will definitely be watching this over the next week going into that December the 12th date. And by the way, December the 12th is when the CPI data will be released. So it will all be very interesting. Okay, back to the CNBC article. Healthcare was the biggest growth industry, adding 77,000 other big gainers, included government, government. 49,000 manufacturing, 28,000 and leisure and hospitality, 40,000. Heading into the holiday season, retail lost 38,000, half of which came from department stores. Now, is that very shocking since most people do their shopping online and on Amazon? In my opinion, I don't think so, but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. I think most, a lot of people are not going to stores, rather buying online or buying on Amazon. Sitting on the old couch and just clicking a button. Let me know your thoughts about that in the comments section below. Duration of unemployment fell sharply, dropping to an average 19.4 weeks the lowest level since February. The report comes at a critical time for the U.S. economy, though growth defined widespread expectations for a recession this year. Most economists expect a sharp slowdown in the fourth quarter and tepid gains in 2024. Federal Reserve officials are watching the jobs numbers closely as they continue to try to bring down inflation that had been running at a four decade high, but has shown signs lately of easing. Futures markets pricing strongly points to the Fed halting its rate hiking campaign and beginning to cut next year, though central bank officials have been more circumspect about what lies ahead. Pricing had been pointing to the first cut happening in March, though that swung following the jobs report, pushing a higher possibility for the first expected cut now in May. The Fed will hold its two-day policy meeting next week, and like I previously stated, that is going to be on December 12th and December 13th with that decision coming from Jerome Powell on December the 13th. I do believe the announcement will be at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with his press conference starting at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Policymakers have been looking to bring the economy in for a soft landing that would feature modest growth a sustainable pace for wage increases and inflation at least progressing back to the Fed's 2% inflation target. And Jerome Powell for the last year, year and a half has been saying that over and over and over again at all of his press conferences. Retail sales fell 0.1% in October, but were still up 2.5% from the previous year. The numbers are not adjusted for inflation, so they indicate that consumers at least have nearly kept 
pace with higher prices. A gauge the Fed uses showed inflation running at a 3.5% annual rate in October, excluding food and energy prices. However, there is some worry that the COVID era stimulus payments and the continued pressure from higher interest rates could eat into spending. Net household wealth fell by about 1.3 trillion in the third quarter to about 151 trillion owing largely to decline in the stock market according to the fed data released this week household debt rose get this household debt rose by 2.5 percent close to the pace where it has been for the past several quarters Fed officials have been watching data closely. Rising prices tend to feed into wages, potentially creating a spiral that can be difficult to control. I would like to briefly touch on a couple of key points on this article on Kitco News by Jim Wyckoff that was published today on Friday, December 8, 2023 at 852 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It says price pressure on gold after Goldilocks U.S. jobs data. Gold and silver prices are weaker in early U.S. trading Friday in the immediate aftermath of a U.S. economic report that suggested the U.S. economy is presently in a pretty good spot. February gold was last down $12.70 to $2,033.80. March silver was last down almost 20 cents at $23.85. Before ending this video, I will revisit the actual silver and gold spot prices. Due to the overall internals of today's jobs report, the report appears to fall very mildly into the camp of the U.S. monetary policy hawks, who wants the Federal Reserve to continue its interest rate increasing cycle. However, others are calling today's jobs data a Goldilocks report, not too hot, not too cold for the general marketplace. U.S. stocks indexes sold off modestly on the jobs report. The U.S. dollar index rallied and U.S. Treasury yields rose a bit. The key outside markets today sees the U.S. dollar index solidly higher. Crude oil prices are firmer and trading around $70.75 a barrel. Prices on Thursday hit a five-month low. The yield on the benchmark U.S. Treasury 10-year note is presently fetching 4.239%. I'll put a link to both of these articles that I referenced in this video from both CNBC and Kitco News in the description of this video if you would like to read both of those articles for yourself. Before ending this video, let's revisit those gold and silver spot prices. It seems like silver is making a mild comeback from when I started this video. Silver is currently down 1.39% or down 33 cents to $23.56. Gold is currently down three quarters of 1% or down $15.30 to $2,013.80. I do appreciate everybody for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Of course, these spot prices are going to fluctuate throughout the day, be more volatile at times, like they always are. Markets do what markets do, they move. Let me know in the comment section below when you're watching this video, what is gold currently at? What is silver currently at while you're watching this video? Let me know your thoughts, your opinions, in the comments section below. Also, what do you think the Federal Reserve will do next week? Will rates stay unchanged or will the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, decide to raise interest rates once again? It will be all very interesting to see. Please like, comment, subscribe. Definitely share your thoughts, your opinions in that comment section below and I'll talk to everybody on my next video. Thanks a lot, everyone.